fundamental to it, if you look at how some of the businesses did well in the fund, they were successful because <laughs> the founding fathers built certain values into them. And upon those values they built, it was successful and it lasted for a while. But when they fail, it's because subsequent generations that took over the business have not been discipled into the values that made it successful. And so it is important that how do we build these values into family members so that for succession, right? And so, so this is where, how do we engage the future journey? How can this be passed down in that sense? So therefore, we need to help. I mentioned to you about the book I'm writing. There's one chapter that deals with some of this area. And I'll tell you what, how I applied it. You know, when you do legacy planning, a lot of the work includes what is the family constitution. As a lawyer, you trial. But this family constitution is a lot about the tangible, the assets the family has and so forth. And so it's all about inheritance, the purpose of that document gets shattered because there's no glue in the family. Without a glue in the family, not, it will just pick apart. So the legal document can be shredded to pieces. <laughs> How do we build that glue? As a Christian, the only glue that we know is the love and the love of God. Without the love of God, nothing will work. Without love being present, nothing will work. Because <laughs> without love, it's about the self, but with love, it's about the others. And so, one of the things that I did in my family, and which I will write about it in my book, is that we all need to do the need be because of practical reason. You need a will, you need to do estate planning, and so forth. But the overriding constitution has to be about not just inheritance, not just the tangible, but about the intangible, <laughs> about the heritage. So I took my family to a retreat in Switzerland, in the mountain. We spent a week or two there. We wrote our family constitution, not the legal form, but the family constitution built upon the ethos of what as a family we want to see as important values to perpetuate, not in this immediate generation, but in the generation to come. So I'm taking a lead from Deuteronomy chapter 6 to Psalm 10 here. It says, write it on the double. So I will write it up. Um, and so we discussed and we went into a detailed version we also identify what are the gifting that God has put in the hands of our different family and how can that gifting be used by God and how, how that streams out into what area of whether business that we want to do. So you will know about the sound of art, smith and all sorts of things that are part of that whole thing because we have you know, interest in media related things and how we can use media and arts to bust purposes, redemptive purpose. So we have written up. And so this is one of my mission in the book is to help Christians. You don't need to be a billionaire to have a family constitution of this nature. It's about what would you like to pass down as the values to your next generation. <laughs> Even if you don't have a dime to pass on, the biggest value you can pass on is the love of God. And how that that how is that love of God expressed to various areas of life in your own family? That's worth a billion dollars or more. That's of eternal value. So this is how I relate to 
One of the things that I did as part of my work, I engaged with wealthy individuals. One day, one of these businessmen asked me, <laughs> like traditional Chinese family, he wants his son to take over. But he realized his son doesn't seem to have aptitude to on this person. So, <laughs> so I said, no. Let me advise you. Your son, whether he is able to take over a business or run your business well, <laughs> how do you first <laughs> disciple, mentor him? <laughs> In your position, what I would do? My first thing is not to <laughs> show him how to run this business that I built up. My first thing is to sit him down and help him to understand stewardship. <laughs> when you understand stewardship, you understand your accountability. You understand asset management, wealth management. But at the end of the day, <laughs> this business you built up may generate income and so forth. He may not have the attitude to run this business. So there's no point putting because instead of adding value, he will destroy value when he takes over. But if he understands stewardship, and especially if you are a Christian from God's perspective, you will see how can I preserve the value or enhance the value. I may not be able to run, but I can find somebody and reward him well to run the business. I benefit the benefit. So when you understand stewardship, you learn how to look after assets, manage well. So this is so he decided that my son work for me. So I say fine. He can work with me for a year or two to learn stewardship. And he did that actually. I employed his son for a period of time to learn this before he can get back to the business. And so I realized, how do we do this? One of the things I do till now, over the years, we do, I do two things, we do two things in the family. We have a weekly family altar where the family come together for worship of God and sharing. <laughs> Individually, myself and my wife, I have what we call 15 minute session, father and son, mother and son, father and daughter to share from our hearts some of our thoughts. So that one day when we go home to the Lord, these are moments that you can remember and then what did it teach So that the values are imparted into the heart, not just the mind because those are tender moments of how I relate to my children.